Hey everybody, I'm working today on the EGR system on my 85 Camaro uh, 305 tune port. And the issue that I'm working on today is an intermittent code 32. And I know we have a lot of issues with code 32s that are um, problems on these cars on the EGR system. And I have some other videos posted. Um, one dealing with putting in a new valve that I found uh, that I tested on my car and um, others with just the logic uh, of the EGR system. Uh, today what I'm going to show you is uh, that I had a problem with a Code 32 on my 85 and a lot of the detail in there is specific to the what 85 to 89 cars but some of it um, you know the basic uh, solenoid system uh, goes through uh, I think all the way out through 92 so I'm going to show you what I did and hopefully it's uh, helpful for others uh, it's just another possibility for uh, how to work through uh, these systems when they malfunction I just got back from a 1200 mile ish loop around Lake Michigan through Wisconsin, Illinois, part of Indiana back around, uh, it started out going through the UP, but anyway, 1200 miles. Um, and several times on that trip I had a Code 32 um, check engine light. And I've shown in some of my previous videos some ways to work on this system, but hey, now mine is broken. And so it's a chance for me, um, chance, heh, I need to dig in and find out what's going on. And the last couple check engine lights I'm assuming are code 32. I'm going to go in and dig in and verify. I'm going to get my scan tool going here in just a moment. And then I'm going to see what I can do to, if there's anything I can do to make it better. Um, I do still have a replacement um, EGR solenoid valve that I found um, that I can adapt. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get the current system working and, and check things out. So, I have my scan tool connected. Um, it's plugged in down below in the diagnostic link down here uh, below the tack and under the dash. Um, this tool requires 12 volts, so it's in the, plugged in the cigarette lighter. As soon as I did that, it powered itself up. So to make this go, what we need to do is hit um, Vehicle Diagnostics and hit Enter. And you can see the second one down is my 85 Camaro. It says that you need to have the cable and that's all good. The key is off. So then we'll turn it on. Alright, and I could also do this with, with the, um, you know, the paperclip method and just dump codes, but let me see what I got here. Let's just do it this way. Alright, it's the same one. Code 32 EGR signaling incorrect valve operation. One code, so that's the only one. And this code set for me, um, I've had a check engine light four times, five times in that 1,200 miles. Um, and, and it resets itself. It's intermittent. In other words, you drive about 10 minutes up to, I think the longest one was my last one, was about a half hour. Um, and then after that 10 minutes to 30 minutes, uh, the light goes out and uh, suggesting that the operation is normal again so I'm I'm kind of suspecting that the solenoid um, may be intermittent and uh, I'm probably going to try to do is clean it but I'm going to take a quick look and make sure hoses and things look correct I'll take a quick look at the trouble trees and we'll see where we're at I have my service manual out and was looking at the trouble trees. First impulse is to follow the trouble tree and that's normally a good thing to do. But the way the trouble trees are written, it's really not 
intended for intermittence, which is where I am right now. It's expecting that you would clear the code and then when you turned it back on that the code would set pretty fast and you could work your way through and find what it is. Because of that, I'm, I'm going to skip following the, the uh, book for the moment. Um, the issue could be, you know, a lack of vacuum, and I'll double check and make sure the vacuum hoses are hooked up. Um, it could be the temperature switch, which I replaced a couple of years ago well, when I built the engine. I put a new switch in, and it could be intermittent, but it's not. It's not bad uh, locked in. It's not constantly bad. So again. Uh, probably not going to work. Um, the AGR valve is new, and you know there's only you know less than ten thousand miles on all the passages being cleaned out. So I'm going to start with looking at this EGR solenoid and see. Um, I've got some cleaner. I'm going to try to clean it. I'm going to measure its resistance. Put it back in and see if um, see if I can make it work right. Well, that solenoid valve is back here in the back. I currently have it unhooked from its um, bracket. So let's see if we can pull this dude out of here and get a look at things. It's kind of tucked in underneath the harness for the fuel injection. It's got a big rubber harness on it, or vacuum uh, connector. It has an electric connection here. I'll lift the tab and just pull that wire out. All right. Here we are. There's the valve. And I'm going to try to put some solvent into it. And I'm going to measure the electrical resistance. Alright, so here's my valve, here's the electrical connector, and I'm going to just gently put the probes in. You don't want to deform the contacts. Let's see where we end up here. Oh. Alright, you see on the gauge I've got about 25 ohms. Now the coil could be, still have a problem, but uh, the standard rule, and it's in the book, is that these coils should be more than 20 ohms to be good. And it's not, um, I'll say it's not infinite. Alright, so I'm going to try cleaning this dude. I'm going to spray the ports here. So like there's a, there's the port for venting. These have little orifices in them, so I'm going to start by cleaning it and see if that's sufficient. Um, the downside of cleaners is sometimes they take out lubrication, so I may need to come back and use something like this WD-40 to um, lubricate it. But we're going to just flush it with, um, this is uh, CRC's QD electronics cleaner. So it's designed to clean electrical equipment and connectors and so forth and gets dirt and grease and so forth um, out. Now you got to be really careful you don't want to power things up that are wet with this because it um, uh, there are some risks. It cautions you that um, you don't want to have the system energized, um, it must be electrically conductive, so you want to make sure all the power is turned off. But I know that this valve has been running for a number of years without a filter on it. Um, I managed to get a filter for it here a while back, and but otherwise uh, it's been pulling air through, and so I'm, again, my suspicion is that it could be dirty. In any case, um, we're going to try that and see if that makes life better. 
Well, I'm back from my test drive. It looks like I'm um, using contact cleaner, electric, electronic cleaner, to clean the EGR solenoid was the right thing to do. Uh, I made about a 60 mile run and in that run had multiple opportunities for the code to reset and it did not. So I, I think I got it. I'll explain just a little bit more. Um, oh, and this one, by the way, this is my VS25. This is, if you looked at my earlier videos, um, this was what I tried as a substitute solenoid in the event that the one breaks on this car and I need to replace it. I broke this one out because I thought it might be time to change it. However, cleaning seemed to do the job. And we'll see, you know, maybe it'll come back. When I was on the road, uh, as I said earlier, it set for me four or five times, five times. Um, the last two times were within 20 miles of, of my destination here. And the last one was, you know, coming down the road two miles away. And when I shut the car off and parked it, it actually had a live check engine light. So to kind of explain a little bit, um, this is an intermittent, and as I said a, few, a little while ago, if you get out the, the trouble trees, they're for hard faults, not for intermittent faults. The way this works on my IROC, on my 85, and it goes for several years forward, is that this is a normally open solenoid that closes down, what, the ECM closes it. So, when, when the engine is cold, it's closed. When you back off on the throttle, it goes closed. When you tip into the throttle and you're running down the road um, with, with your foot in it a little bit, then this opens up proportionately depending on how much the ECM wants it open. And then there's a sensor on my car, there's a sensor underneath the valve, uh, the EGR valve, that picks up the temperature from opening the EGR valve and the hot gas is going by, that temperature switch closes and tells the ECM that the valve is working correctly. Now some of the later cars, and I think the brake's around 89, but the later cars used a different strategy um, and that, that switch at one point went away and they revised this circuit. But these earlier cars with the 305 tuned port um, have, you know, have this valve working in that fashion. Now, according to the service manual, in order, I'm going to do this in rough terms, in order to set the diagnostic, you need to run for at least four minutes with the EGR signaling on, which means you're tipped into the throttle a little ways, so the EGR, so this this valve opens up because when you're idling it'll be closed. When the engine's cold it'll be closed. So when you tip in it'll open it up. You should have EGR flow. It will time for four minutes and see if it's gotten hot in four minutes time. If you tip out of the throttle that valve should close again and so you need four minutes continuous with with a uh, I'm going to say a roughly constant load. So when it was when I was getting the light, um, it was several different places, but it was 50 to 55 miles an hour on the two-lane roads, constant speed. It was 70 to 75 miles an hour on the interstates um, at constant speed. And if you if you got a good foot and can hold it steady um, and not back off then it, it makes it uh, possible for the code to set. So today, my 60 miles, I had four different stretches that were 8 to 12 miles um, with stops in between. I started up with a warm engine and drove the next segment and was very careful 
to keep that throttle not backing off, to keep that throttle, um, you know, hold. so I was holding steady 50, steady 55, st steady 60, 65, and it didn't set. So, if you're having one of these intermittent code 32s, um, it may very well be worth trying a little bit of cleaner in the, in the valve, along with the check with your volt ohm meter, with an ohm meter check, that the coil in this in this valve is above 20 ohms and I don't know what the upper end ought to be there's not a spec for that but I expect that I'm going to pick a number and say if, if your coils over mm, three or four hundred ohms it's probably wrong um, you know the um, these tend to be lower resistance coils so you, you want to make sure the coil isn't open, you want to make sure it isn't shorted. Um, if that's the case, then try cleaning it and see if you can make it work. So far it worked for me. Um, if, it, uh, if something goes wrong and I get it and it comes back on me, I'll post it somewhere. But that's all for now.